Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are talking about Monogame. Monogame 3.7 was just released, and I figured I'd take this time more to talk about Monogame, to be honest, than the release. The release isn't really earth-shattering. It's iterative at this point in time. Monogame is a very mature framework, and this release is sort of representative of that. Now, they don't do a whole lot of releases a year, so there is significance here. This is first released in about a half a year, but most of what you're going to see there isn't really new features and functionality. It's quality of life improvements, bug fixes, that that kind of stuff. And we'll get all into that in just one moment. Now, if you've never heard of Monogame, Monogame is an open source port, at least started life as an open source port of Microsoft's XNA. Now, Microsoft's XNA was just classic Microsoft. Microsoft being awesome and terrible all at the same time. Uh, they basically started off and wanted to make this indie game industry. They did. They actually made it so indie game developers could actually go ahead and publish their games on consoles and make money. In many ways, they were the beginning of the indie game movement. And then Microsoft being Microsoft, they canceled XNA, shot it in the head, and said, you'll use Unity instead. Which is a shame. So XNA was basically a set of tools and frameworks that allowed you to import all your content and work within a special version of Visual Studio to create games you could run on various different platforms. And Model Game has taken that one step further and added a whole lot more platforms. Things like uh, iPad, iOS, Switch, a uh, number of different consoles. Mono games have been ported to all kinds of environments. As you'll see in a second, mono games, you've probably heard of them. Almost all of the indie darlings you actually hear about, especially 2D indie darlings, have a mono game history. We'll see some of the releases in a second. So first, let's talk today about the 3.7 release. This is the release announcement on their forums. I'll toss this link down below as I always do, but what we're probably most interested in is the change request. And truth of the matter is, as I mentioned earlier on, this isn't an earth shattering um, update by any means. It's kind of just kind of an incremental improvement because this is a mature framework. They're not going to be adding a whole lot of new functionality on it because this is kind of, an, again, a lower level framework as well. This is the kind of thing you build your own game engine on top of. Um, but you see things like, um, added Switch as a platform. I guess that one's definitely big. If you're a Nintendo Switch developer, you can now target it with uh, Mono Game, and there are already Mono Games shipped and being sold on the Nintendo Switch, so uh, that's kind of nice. Uh, but on top of that, you're talking mostly changes to the gamepad, fixes in how things work. Uh, Xbox One S support now works on Linux. Um, improved game control databases across the board here. Uh, microphone implementation in OpenAL. Some things about their packaging, um, you know, again, nothing really to set the world on fire, but definitely stuff to that has improved in, in, you know, the steady drive of improvement that you see with further and further releases of Monogame. Now, let's get to the games that were actually made using Monogame. This is from uh, Wikipedia. And this is not by any means a complete list, but you're going to recognize a lot of indie darlings on here. Things like Bastion, Celeste, Dust, and Elysian Tale, Fez, um... Uh, Salt and Sanctuary, Pyre, Skulls of the Shogun, Transistor. Some of the best-selling games that have ever been released from indie developers, and especially you see Supergiant Games really stands out on this list. They're all made using model games. So this is a battle-tested implementation of um, XNA that continues to drive on. And you can see from the pedigree that there are a number of commercial games made using it. So it is a very legit framework. It's the kind of thing you would work with if you want to work a little bit lower level. So, you know, you're not talking the game editor or drag and drop type functionality you might get in a higher level game engine like uh, Gado or Unity or Unreal Engine. This is a level lower, more like what you get from LibGDX. In fact, it's kind of a little bit lower than even LibGDX. This one has, uh, you, you implement more things for yourself that LibGDX probably does for you. Now, if you're interested in learning more, hey, I got you covered. I've actually already done a um, pretty comprehensive tutorial series, gets you up to all of the 2D stuff, and then starts into 3D programming using Monogame. This isn't really... Uh, a 3D game engine is, again, more of a framework that provides the basic stuff and gives it to you in a cross-platform manner. But I walk you through all of those tasks, um, and I will link this tutorial down below as well. Uh, you know, may also notice that I used a graphic here. Do, 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 do. You see a game here in the background that was written using Mono Game. Well, that was um, Wayward Terran Frontier Zero Falls, which was written using Mono Game and is available in early access on Steam. So I figured I'd properly give credit for the background image I used there. Now, one other thing to be aware of: if you are more of an XNA purist, so since since Mono Game kind of hit that whole 100% compatibility with 
uh, XNA, you know, it's not just a port of XNA anymore. It's kind of its own project and it's doing its own things now. It is a hundred percent of what XNA was for the most part. And then now it's becoming more. Well, if you want to be more of a, I want binary compatibility with XNA on multiple platforms, there's another project out there also called FNA, which is another implementation of XNA uh, that is separate from model game, but also completely open source. So if you're interested, I will toss that link in there as well. So XNA lives on. It's amazing that, you know, over a decade later, XNA is still this relevant and still being used to make so many different games. But that is an attest to what a great thing Microsoft created back when they created XNA. And such a stupid job they did killing it off and throwing away the indies like they had. It's just so stupid. They invented the first indie store and the first indie community and then just threw it away. But uh, you know what? Sony turned around and did the exact same thing. They launched their own um, PlayStation. God, I should remember the name because I did a book on it. Um, oh, this isn't coming to me. PlayStation Mobile. So they launched their whole PlayStation Mobile initiative, which was kind of like XNA for uh, PlayStation uh, Vita and uh, such. And they, they threw that away too. So I don't know. Eh. Anyways, uh, it's a great framework. You're looking for something a little bit low level in the C-sharp world. And as mentioned originally, and the reason for this entire video, 3.7 is now out and available, at least as of 22 hours ago. All right, that's it for now. Are you using XNA? If so, let me know what you think down below. If you're looking at starting with XNA, you want to get yourself a little bit more code focused in your game development, uh, do sure be sure to check out that uh, tutorial I already did. I think you will find it's an enjoyable experience. It's just... It's just a comfortable framework to work with. I, I, I've still got a font spot for XNA. So as a result, I also have a font spot for Mono Game and FNA. But I'm curious to hear what your opinions are. Comments down below. All right. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.